Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Couple of Nerds. I'm your host, D&D Wife, and with me is my co-host, husband, and Dungeon Master, Ega. How's it going, everyone? <laughs> welcome, welcome. So today's episode is going to be a Just Us segment where we offer a glimpse into our journey uh, adventuring in this great hobby and also some of the side hobbies that we've picked up along the way. Uh, in this case, we're going to be tackling uh, starting off with airbrushing, which is going to be super exciting. Oh, yeah. We always want to give an opportunity for people to learn a little bit more about us mm -hmm. as well as kind of ways to share our hobbies and learn of other hobbies from others and kind of, you know, expand our nerdiness. Yeah. And so this is just another start of another hobby that we have. <laughs> um, but I think it was one that we really thought long and hard about mm -hmm. before diving in into. Yeah, it's tough uh, when you're creative sort of people, you know, we all know it's kind of tough to, to keep yourself to just one specific hobby. So we try to keep it sort of in check for ourselves. But this one was one I thought that we thought would benefit us greatly, not just because of its artistic implications, but because it, it's really a skill to be learned. Yeah, I mean, it really was something where it was like, okay, like, in the world of, uh, you know, as you kind of progress up the chain of, like, hobbies and games, and so, like, in the case of D&D, &D, it's like you start with paper craft, and then mm -hmm. you can get little tokens and you get mini it's kind of the same thing with like doing the creative side of it yeah, so if you start with kind side. of yeah right you start with like brushes with low paints mm -hmm. and then you start getting higher quality paints yeah. and, and that was kind of us as we planned i mean probably years ago where it was like hey once we get comfortable once mm -hmm. we kind of go maybe we'll we'll look at this airbrushing thing yeah because it's it's expensive and it's a little intimidating. <laughs> yeah, that was my biggest thing is is always that worry with like, you know, mixing paints mm -hmm. and, and it, it's not right. It mess and so it's like, man, it's almost like the science of paint. Yeah, you know, if if you get it wrong, do you waste all that paint now? It it's really intimidating to to think about uh, being able to just jump into that and oh, it just gives me a little bit of shivers. <laughs> yeah. And I think what it really started with was probably my push. Mm -hmm. um, I was really kind of <clears throat> at that point, I've, I've, you know, I've been DMing for a while yeah. and we're doing the podcast, which has been going great. And mm -hmm. now it's like, <clears throat> how can I help you, uh, you know, paint more miniatures and get more yeah, stuff done, but also tough. with my limited time, how can I be really efficient with mm -hmm. that? And that's when I kind of went back to the thought process of airbrushing. Yeah, because paint, uh, you know, brush brush paint is a little more intricate, a little more time consuming. And so you really have to sit down for an extended period of time to to kind of get that the the time you need to get something good out of a project that you're that you're creating but airbrushing cuts all that time down yeah and then as always you know being that we live in an apartment mm -hmm. and everything we also have to have things that we you know aren't large yeah that we can store <clears throat> away and bring out easily i mean i wish we had a garage so that <laughs> i could have like a wood shop and there's like so many things that i could build but <sighs> Can dream. being limited in an apartment <laughs> you know you also have to make sure that the hobbies you kind of explore are ones that can be realistically done within a small space yeah and that are manageable within that space and i find it's like using them is one thing but mm -hmm. having a space and being able to put them away to where they're not like a nuisance is the biggest thing yeah. because like you know everybody like one hobby i would say like a lot of people it's always like fitness equipment mm -hmm. and it's always these big old things like a treadmill or a stationary bike which yep. we have we have <laughs> so we're speaking from experience mm -hmm. um so we're not we're, we're part of it <laughs> but it also becomes something where it's like it's a hobby but also because of its size or what it takes mm -hmm. up it's not easy to use yeah so that thing that you were like oh yeah i'm totally gonna do that but if it's such a hassle to get to it to unpack it to put it up to set it up mm -hmm. it, it, you'll never even get uh, the ability to even start doing your hobby yeah it's tough when y it sort of takes over your living space so you know say you have a coffee table uh, you know your living space your living room space but you can't really enjoy that space because your hobbies are strewn all over that coffee table so it's really difficult to separate the hobby from your life yeah, and, and not only that, but then there's also the aspect of, like, I've always wanted to help you, you know, with with paints and mm -hmm. stuff like that with the miniatures. But, like, I don't really have the, like, most dexterous of skills. Like, my hands are a little mangled due to my, my career and yeah. stuff like that. 
but like it was always something where it's like the idea of like holding a really tiny brush was mm-hmm. like oh that's got to be murder on my hands it's tough yeah so i also wanted to look into something that i could do that i was already slightly comfortable with mm-hmm. and also wouldn't give me any kind of like you know pain in my hand yeah because you don't want that and you can't really pick up a hobby that you appreciate and then also be in pain while doing it it just sours the whole experience yeah and then i'd also you know say and it's you know it's kind of it's just it's cool it is very (laughs) kind of cool it's it's a it's a new thing and and (laughs) as i've been using it now for like the last couple of months it's just so cool of an effect and and the way it works Mm -hmm. and after a while of kind of adjusting it it does become this thing where like i feel like i'm actually contributing and helping you in our mini projects good i'm glad it it is tough you know paint brushing uh, a miniature takes so much time but it's not just cool it's fast I, right and that and then that was like i think one of the major facets too is that i've been doing mm-hmm. a lot of spray painting yeah. like a lot of your miniatures i'll take them on our back patio with a mm-hmm. piece of cardboard and i'll and i'll prime them yeah but we kind of live in an in an area where our weather is so kind of spotty mm-hmm. uh you know in california so we have all these different kind of weather patterns so it can it, it's hard to get consistent sunny days on sometimes yeah. or there's just this limited window mm-hmm. so it's like okay during the summer we can get minis primed but after that, we're out of luck. Yeah, and ours also our patio has like different uh, times of the day that it's like perfectly in the sun mm-hmm. or not. Yeah, again, living downstairs mm-hmm. in an apartment has its own hassles you have to yeah. deal with with access to like a you know a, a sunny spot mm-hmm. for six hours. Exactly. And so, you know, it it made it where by having the airbrush now we can prime, we can get things ready mm-hmm. in the house at any temperature at any yep. time and have a, a very clean product. Yeah and that's that's gonna help so much yeah and i think like all those factors because for us really when it comes to jumping into hobbies we have kind of some rules we like to maintain the Mm -hmm. rule of three yes (laughs) we are not allowed to have more than three (laughs) active hobbies at a time (laughs) now this does not mean that we only have three hobbies i have like 10 (laughs) oh god we have so many (laughs) but but the point is uh that you can only have the the tools out for those three hobbies out at any given time because if you have more than that it can just it can get really cluttered yeah that and it's just like you only have so much time in the day yeah and obviously D D takes one of our slots mm-hmm. um it's still work <laughs> and, right and so it's it's also it's it's kind of that way of you know also hobbies are very expensive they are. so if you're trying to do and buy all these you know high-end things you can find yourself in a lot of trouble and then not even realize that you can't even use those high-end things because yeah. you don't have the time you don't have the time to sit there and fiddle with them like you wanted to or there's so many you can't decide and now you you've got the you know the conundrum of choice where you don't you end up not doing anything because you don't you don't you can't choose yeah and and you know, I've always had a personal rule and you kind of adopted this and mm-hmm. where it's like if you have something that you haven't even touched in a year. Yeah. That's probably something you should get rid of. Yeah. Because it's just something that obviously an entire year has gone by and you have not needed this thing. Obviously, mementos and certain things. Right. Uh, are excluded. Those are excluded. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, practical items mm-hmm. and stuff like that, because it's like, hey, you're not actually using it. Why? Especially in a small apartment. Yeah. You got to sometimes sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we kind of really, you know, when I, I started doing that researching into the airbrush it Mm -hmm. was always looking at you know don't buy the most expensive thing you can find you know i managed to find a kit that came with like a handheld pump that had like it was like 40 Mm dollars on amazon that was just kind of a basic setup yeah and that way it was okay we can get this if we like it Mm -hmm. cool great if we don't (laughs) It's not a big deal, mm-hmm. and usually when we don't like something, we offer it to someone else. Yes. At a, you know, we don't. We just give it away. We don't yeah. make someone pay for no, it. No, no, no. So we got that, and we got some pre-made paints, mm-hmm. so we didn't have to worry about the mixing and the, yeah. and, and the blending. And that way, we weren't really diving too hard mm-hmm. into it to begin with. Baby steps. We're dipping our toes. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm specifically excited uh, about just the whole having a new medium to work with in terms of miniatures, because like I said, the paint brushing can take a long time. And the the good news about this is that you can help me with like the base coatings, which is amazing. And then I can go in with fine detail work with my little psycho brush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and be sure to keep an eye out on our Discord, mm-hmm. the Atreus Project Discord, because we'll be posting some of these uh, work in progresses yeah. that 
-hmm. you're working on that's going to show the combination of blending uh, I'm working on a pretty cool big project yep. that I'm hoping will come out pretty well. Got some few more sets mm -hmm. I want to put on it. Uh, but we'll be releasing also some videos of us doing that. So yeah. you can also see kind of how I have zero experience. And mm -hmm. so I'm just doing it off of what I've learned. And it just shows that just anyone can really get started in something like this. Yeah, I will say the airbrush is really intuitive uh, because I've never used airbrush. And I've never really used like uh, paint cans either spray paint cans so that motion to spray the paint isn't really ingrained in me it's super easy and intuitive to just pick that up and start working so yeah so right now we're what like two three months into our little airbrushing mm -hmm. experiment it's been a fun ride so far uh you know it didn't just start from scratch either. It's not like we just picked it up and started painting. You had to watch a lot of videos and look into kind of do some research. Oh, yeah. I mean, I spent like even before we bought it, I spent a couple days worth of just time mm -hmm. kind of navigating of always doing, you know, your stereotypical uh, YouTube search, like beginner <laughs> airbrush tips, how to use an airbrush. Yeah. What should I buy? Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and a lot of that is just so invaluable because it really is kind of that way to get that experience especially when it comes to like skill-based activities mm -hmm. and, and getting those beginner tips are always like really important um, because it really builds on a good foundation for your hobby to at least kind of have that starter information absolutely if you go into it completely blind sure hey if that's how you like to experience and and find new hobbies mm -hmm. awesome but really, I like to have at least a little bit of a knowledge base so that way I know I'm not getting completely out of, you know, over my head in this new activity. Yeah, absolutely. It's tough to to just jump in without any foreknowledge. So it's, it's important to do your research beforehand. And, you know, I, I would just recommend watching as many videos, tutorials, because all of that helps in the long run. Yeah. And then and then when it comes to like purchasing an airbrush, you know, I mean, Amazon is always kind of a good thing. Mm -hmm. you know, we're not sponsored, nothing, anything like that. But obviously being in apartment living, being busy, yeah. having hobbies, you know, having an ability to get something a couple days notice and be able to kind of adjust is, mm -hmm. is really invaluable. And so if you have resources like that, you know, we... We happen to live in an area where we don't have really a lot of hobby shops that we could just go and buy supplies. Otherwise, we'd, shop, tough, we'd yeah. shop local if we mm -hmm. could. Yeah. But it's just tough. So, But being able to go on Amazon and like looking up beginner airbrush kits and seeing the reviews and seeing how other people mm -hmm. have viewed those items is really important to know kind of what you're getting into. Yeah. It, you know, doing the research beforehand is extremely helpful. And it can also give you ideas on where to start once you are ready to kind of dip your toe in and get and actually get a project underway. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, even like as I like discovered as like researching and learning more about like the airbrush and the the brush itself mm -hmm. and that there are different styles to allow for different kind of hand combinations yeah that's one thing i didn't realize yeah like uh, you know we, we kind of noticed right off the bat you're not the biggest fan of the traditional kind of push and pull back style yeah you're, you it's funny because you have a kind of a difficulty kind of keeping it's that tough. momentum i have to use like my thumb to <laughs> to stabilize it to a way that i feel comfortable right. for me it's like intrinsic like mm -hmm. I, I just seem to have picked up the thing but we discovered that there's an airbrush that has more of like a trigger a traditional trigger yeah. that would allow you to kind of have more control mm -hmm. but would also allow say if you have any kind of hand disability yeah. kind of better access to holding the brush and using mm -hmm. your hands so it's really nice that uh you know there are more brush styles out there for people who may have a disability but still want to get into this project yeah or like a lot of tools are built unfortunately for like right-handed people and you're left-handed there aren't <laughs> a lot for left-handed yeah, people i mean luckily airbrushing doesn't seem to have any it's of nice that. It's, yeah it's, a, it's an ambidextrous kind of thing mm -hmm. which is great uh but i do run into certain problems you know especially you know the dreaded scissors is yeah. always fun <laughs> Um, but this is one of those tech, one of those kind of types of, of hobby that there are a lot of versatile mm -hmm. options for you. And we learned and saw that. And, you know, already right now is we've already kind of upgraded our airbrush, oh, yeah. having learned that there's kind of a little more to them. Yep. There's differences in like pressure and all sorts of things that you have to look into. Oh, yeah. And the, and the first the one we bought was, you know, perfectly fine. Oh, yeah. it, but we found that it just didn't quite have what we needed. So mm -hmm. then now that we had a couple months worth of time and practice yep. with just this kind of basic one, mm -hmm. we were able to kind of look and find the right one for the medium price that we're yeah. not going again, not 
jumping way into mm-hmm. the deep end of the pool. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> buy the Airbrush Matic 2000 yet. Right, yeah, <laughs> right. You know, a thousand dollar piece of equipment yeah. that we break in two days because we have no idea what we're doing. Exactly. Um, but but after that, it was it was. I remember getting the new brush and using it and just being like, oh my goodness, like we Night and day. we weren't even in the we weren't even in the carpool lane yet. Like we <laughs> whatever don't that brush was, yeah. it wasn't I, it. <laughs> you know, so so really, you know, don't also give your first when you know you're buying like the kind of the lower quality Mm -hmm. don't judge that as being the entirety of the experience either because you are taking kind of the baby steps into the hobby and we kind of had to take Mm -hmm. that into our own mind where it was like okay we're gonna do this for three months we're gonna see Mm -hmm. how we like it first before we put any kind of investment yeah and you know it's easy to get discouraged when you see a project go in a different way than you thought it might go But honestly, uh, it it can do with the equipment that you have. So if you feel that you're ready to graduate to a better equipment, that's always best. Um, You are the best gauge of how comfortable you are with moving on in a a hobby. Right. And I I found like, you know, I had, um, you know, certain difficulties that I struggled with, with kind of like the holding of the brush and like kind of the dexterous actions. Mm -hmm. And, And really, it's more of not operating the brush but it's more of like the technique and, and the styles and how to do yeah. these different things you kind of struggled in different ways yourself and i feel like mm-hmm. maybe it might have something to do with you being like a paintbrush kind of person yeah i think uh while paint brushing is more time consuming and a little more detail oriented and intricate it does provide more control for me as the artist uh to do what i feel needs to be done on on the canvas right uh but the airbrush it, it sort of kind of does it for for you a little and you have to let go a little bit of that control and just let it do its job yeah and, and, <laughs> and I, you know and i think that's that's a kind of also what when you look at your hobbies and when you start doing comparable hobbies mm-hmm. uh, you know so sometimes you can get rooted in like the style or the techniques that work yeah. for one but it doesn't Mm -hmm. for the other so i'm coming in as this blind per you know coming in blind i don't know i have never really done any painting work that's always been you Mm -hmm. you know i'll paint a house but painting you know a figurine was out of the question yeah it's tough so so coming in that that proposed different challenges but Mm -hmm. different in a sense that i'm coming at it so kind of wide-eyed that it comes some some of the techniques seem to come to me much sooner Mm -hmm. and you know uh just like in for paintbrush painting uh the same i recommend the same thing for airbrushing always start with creatures first and then graduate to people oh i haven't even yeah, uh, that, uh, yeah. no people yeah that's I my have. little piece of advice yeah. here is always start with creatures regardless of the medium that you're using for for painting miniatures start with creatures first they are much more forgiving you can mess around with colors and textures and and it can look really great even if it's not something that fits on that monster normally uh but people are extremely unforgiving in terms of paint <laughs> I, I find like everything and especially in like the ttrpg sounds like people are the hardest for everything for everything absolutely <laughs> it, you know those who who paint uh, just, npc miniatures know that the eyes are the hardest part of the miniature it's so difficult not to end up with googly eyes i think and then i think the biggest thing and then like what we came into it too and it's always kind of the good remember mm-hmm. to thing to remember when like working especially with painting style hobbies is that you can always paint over yep. and start again. Absolutely. I already have done that a few times mm-hmm. where I had messed up or the coat didn't quite go on right. Um, and, you know, rather than just giving up, you would you would always just kind of remind me, well, cover it in a different color, yeah. start over from scratch and, mm-hmm. and re-begin. And, and that's the biggest thing is like, look at your setbacks, but look at them as ways to learn yeah. and, and to keep growing in the hobby and mm-hmm. that you're learning it's okay to make mistakes. And so we kind of have to do that to our, because you and I are both perfectionists. Absolutely. We'll, we'll admit to it. Like <laughs> it's open and honest. Yeah. Uh, but we have to kind of hold each other accountable. And that's, and that's mm-hmm. really what kind of also brings us close is that because we both kind of have this drive, but also this insecurity <laughs> when it comes to doing things, yeah. it really helps us kind of see the person kind of need the help before they need the help. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that really kind of makes it when it comes to like trying new hobbies really important. So yeah. when you have hobbies, you don't 
have to necessarily have the hobbies of your partner. Yes, exactly. But you have to know that you just, you both like hobbies. And yeah. the idea of that is what you'd be supportive of. You know, revel in the fact that you're both creative people and it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to share everything. There are some things that I do that, that DM Eguile doesn't. And there are some things that he does that I don't do. Uh, you know, you love to build Gundam models. Yeah. I don't. I, that's not my you thing. You helped me a few, for a few I've times. helped, but yeah, it's not but my it's not passion, yeah. you know. And There's I like giant... to paint on canvas, and that's not really something you like to do. No, that's something I'm never gonna <laughs> We don't do wine painting class. I'll, I'll be I'll be like the, you know, the the subject matter before I'll probably paint the canvas. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, speaking of, you know, sharing and, and knowledge, we, we mm-hmm. very much push, and, and I think it's also all of us in the community of, you know, we all learn these things together now with things like, you know, groups and communities and especially like our discord yeah. we have created a community where now we can share these tips and you don't have to feel like you're being told down by someone with a million you know plus subscribers where you're like yeah they are reading a script and they're no yeah. we're just regular folks that are mm. trying to learn hobbies and doing it our own way yeah. and going our own path <laughs> Uh, so, you know, we, we've already in such a short time have started learning some of the, ti- the, the tips and tricks of, of airbrushing. Mm-hmm. And it's it's from us practically learning from just, you know, experiencing and failing. Yep. <laughs> as well as a lot of the YouTube videos we've gone out and looked at. There are some really great assets out there that are that are for free on YouTube. You don't have to pay for a class. Yeah. <laughs> And so, like, one of the the major things, and I think it was, like, a universal, and I mm-hmm. think it's the biggest part, and it comes with also paintbrushing, yeah. is that it is one of those activities where when you are done, you stop what you're doing and you clean everything that moment. Yes. I mean, brushes you, are the same you, way. <laughs> we were starting early, and, and I'd use some of your paintbrushes. Oh, my goodness. If I... If I happen to not instantly start, I remember I end up getting separate brushes, so we never ran into this problem again. Yeah. <laughs> but it is that stress, right? And, and airbrushing is even more because mm-hmm. it's not a brush, right? It's it's parts. Yeah. And if those parts get dried paint on it, forget about it. Mm-hmm. it it's gone. Like, yeah. And it's not like necessarily gone in terms of the device, but it is in terms of the quality of the spray. You're going to get freckles Mm -hmm. it's gonna only come out after you let go of the button which was a problem we couldn't solve for the Mm -hmm. longest time or you might get splashes of color of the previous color in there that you didn't realize were still stuck in there. yeah when there's little chunks of blue coming in your black as much as you think it looks cool it's not cool no you know (laughs) if that's not what you're going for then you really don't want unwanted color where you're not trying to have it so so really where like we learn is like that foundation of like you know really take your 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 device apart mm-hmm. learn how it comes apart so that way you can properly clean it and yeah. and really the I think the biggest um thing that we were we found first was get a proper airbrush cleaning fluid. Yes. There are some make it at your home mm-hmm. uh types of solutions yep, now. Yep. I I don't necessarily recommend this myself because you are mixing various chemicals. So for apartment livers, that's tough because it means you have to have stockpiles of that. Mm -hmm. I recommend purchasing it on Amazon. It's worth the investment Mm -hmm. and you use very little of this stuff. Yeah, and as far as I know, it wasn't that expensive either, right? I think it was $7.99 for a big old bottle of it. Yeah, and we use minimal amounts of it. Yeah, a couple drops here and there. And and that preserves the equipment. It makes sure that like the old paint kind of gets chunked Mm -hmm. off and you just run it with the water. And that's a real big thing. Now, you, like I said, you can make your own. Yeah. But I do encourage to to, kind of go out and support the people that make the product specifically for this purpose mm-hmm. at least if you're a beginning right you don't want to you want don't want to burden yourself with too many things to do all at once so i would recommend purchasing the cleaner and then once you get more comfortable in it you can make your own forays into creating your own and i think what really also helped me is i kind of had this idea of like okay if i think it's clean i'm gonna clean it one more time yeah always double and check I, and i think that's helped out a lot mm-hmm. because it's like when I've already like put it away and it's dry and I'm like, okay, I think it's clean. And then I'll run a little bit more of the cleaner and some more color comes mm-hmm. out. And it's like, okay, good. So it really is a stickler of like, you know, as much as you're going to not want to do it, take the half hour, yep. clean the device. Mm-hmm. But what it really means is that this is one of those hobbies, much like painting that you need to set yourself up. Mm-hmm. I always kind of have a little snack or yep. a drink next <laughs> to me. I have everything set up, mm-hmm. phone plugged in. I'm usually recording, yep. but that way, I don't have to move and I'm not just going to do a little, little, 
you know, 20 minutes here. I, I'm going to sit myself down for a good amount of time. Yeah, an hour at uh, least. And so that's really the plan. So if you are planning on getting into airbrushing like us, know that it is one of those things where you want to make sure you can dedicate like an hour or two mm -hmm. to just doing airbrushing. It's not really like a pick up and play kind of thing. Yeah. And I know sometimes it's tough to find the time to, to do so. But honestly, if it's something that you're super passionate about and you really want to want to dive into it, You'll find a time. You'll you'll set aside some time. Uh, you know, sacrifices must be made for the hobbies that we live. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, but that's it. That's kind of the good thing is mm -hmm. you know, especially if you have hobbies that give you practical items. Yeah. That whether you want to start an e-commerce mm -hmm. or you want to just increase your tables, you know, yeah. shine and glamour, yeah. it all gives you something tangible. But there obviously are other hobbies that go you know more internal, and there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that either. But you also want to make sure you keep kind of your focus. Yeah. I, you know, I always like to say that that a hobby is great, but a hobby that gives you a skill is so much better. <laughs> yeah. And one of the skills that mm -hmm. I've learned now and, and really came down is the idea of Zenithal priming. Yeah. That was a new concept to me, too. Yeah. I, I didn't really know what it was. I looked it up and I've taken to it and I've absolutely loved mm -hmm. this process of just essentially you black your whole mini. You take and you cover it in a dark black, mm -hmm. usually a flat. And then coming at from like the top yeah. down, you give it a, a white or whatever your kind of underlying base coat, a light mm -hmm. brown, a light gray. And that after you, because of the nature of airbrushing and the thinness that it comes in, it creates this like texture and this kind of blending that I've really seen really pop in some of these new minis that I'm doing. Yeah, it, it seems from what I've observed, because I haven't I haven't attempted the Zenithal priming, but I've seen you do it. And it seems like you're creating the the depth and shadow and highlight beforehand. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I've messed up a few times because, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it is that like, you know, you can do it, mm -hmm. and it, and it can be one way. But there is such a nuance of learning now, like what pressure does, and knowing that you need to be on a lower pressure for zenithal priming, yeah. and and how that kind of accentuates the look. And mm -hmm. really, what it does is it always kind of gives that view of like I have a spotlight right on top of the mini at all times yeah. and like the sun is kind of and so you see kind of that color change coming from above them mm -hmm. uh i've kind of started also experimenting with different angles of the yeah. zenithal priming so i'm also going to see how that kind of turns out yeah because I, I was like, going to say light doesn't just come from above <laughs> right and so we've been kind of and so well you know hopefully we'll have some little bit of show and tell yeah. on that later <laughs> for the discord but i know that like you know you have been also helping me a lot with understanding color yeah so it's tough you know when you're starting out and and you don't feel comfortable with mixing colors this is why we bought the pre-mix stuff but even then you know the pre-mix stuff didn't come with all necessarily all the colors that we would want yeah um so we do have to eventually learn uh to to make them ourselves uh but i think it's just work in droplets uh because oh, yeah, that was i was not doing that to <laughs> yeah you don't want to just squirt as much as you want uh, you want to work in droplets because in case you make a mistake or the color that you mix isn't the right color that you want, you don't feel too bad about taking that out of the airbrush or off your brush and feel like you've wasted so much paint now. Yeah, that was a big deal in the beginning mm -hmm. where we were wasting, well, I say we, <laughs> me, <laughs> I was wasting quite a lot of paint just because I would try something and it's like, oh, I don't really like this. And you're just kind of like, okay, two or three drops is going to get you a long way. Yeah. And you can really test it and not worry that you know <laughs> you're yeah. taking the whole bottle <laughs> and, and and really what it is is like it, it's really just experimenting mm -hmm. and just being patient with it yeah take your time and don't discourage yourself because you've made a mistake those are always learning points uh, and you should always take them in a positive light because all mistakes make you better oh yeah and and because that's really what it is right like I, like we always talk even if we if I've primed or I've done a mini where I'm like, I don't really like it. We still finish it mm -hmm. because it still shows the progress. Yeah, you can always look back on it later once you've up to your skill level, so to speak. And you can compare it to one that you've done in recent times and see exactly how much you've improved. Oh, yeah. And I mean, if you can look on our TikTok, you actually can see some of the videos you posted mm -hmm. 
on the Couple of Nerds podcast TikTok yeah. that shows our mini collection. And yeah. you can actually see <laughs> if you look deep and you can see some mm-hmm. of the different painted minis that you've done. And there, there's kind of almost like a timeline on some of them where oh, we yeah. see kind of the early. Mm-hmm. And then we actually can start seeing where you got the things like the glow paints. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. basically where I can I could take a UV light in our or mm-hmm. a black light in our minis area and we can instantly see the new generation minis because they yeah. have the glow effects yep. and they're all different. <laughs> uh, I will say, you know, you can really tell on my miniatures because the early miniatures were a lot of like blocked out matte colors without much variance. Metallics. Not a lot of shadow, not a lot of depth, not a lot of highlight. Uh, but now uh, I've gotten really into doing like fur. Uh, hair is something All that's super washes. intricate. Yeah, the washes are that really cool. That was a cool. whole new concept to me. <laughs> yeah, you can you can change the entire look of a miniature with just a, a simple wash. My favorite right now is uh, called moldy wash. It can make things look moldy. That's dope. <laughs> but like you know, as as we kind of come to the end, we we really stress that idea of like we're a community mm. and the community grows by each one of us learning different things and bringing it back to the community yeah. so that we all can learn and kind of mm-hmm. grow on each other. Yeah. And so we always encourage you to come join us on the Extraeus Project mm-hmm. Discord. Join our community. Share us your airbrush. Do you have any techniques? Do you have tips? Do you have videos that we need to yeah. see? Send us the links. Send us the videos. Let us know. Please come out and show us. That would be amazing just because we're still learning. We would love to see it. And, you know, we're going to be posting our stuff to our work in progress. We got a few coming up. Keep an eye out on our Discord because it's usually where we're going to post things first. Yeah. Eventually, those videos do come out to YouTube. But, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just you and me. So it does. And and, some time. And at length. So sometimes (laughs) it does take us a lot longer to put out certain content. Uh, A little bit. But Discord, you're always going to see it there first. Mm -hmm. Maybe even with months ahead. I mean, Ellen shows off a lot of her previews Mm -hmm. on Discord. Mm, absolutely so definitely check it out if you want the latest scoops on things without having to wait so much and you know if you liked this episode if you liked the topics that we're talking about uh, like review and subscribe the podcast every little bit helps and also knowing you know what you think about it what you like what you don't like it helps us make new content and increase our level as well you know (laughs) oh yeah and just as always, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for being part of this little project, yep, yep. our other hobby we have started uh-huh. with the Couple of Nerds <laughs> podcast. So excited. Have a good night. <laughs> night, everyone. <laughs>